I want to share with you a prophetic picture that the Lord showed me. And I pray that it be an encouragement to your heart. May you truly believe today that you are the purchased and purified bride of Christ, the wife of the Lamb. I've entitled this vision in the royal family. I saw Jesus walk from the Father's glory cloud to meet with me. Jesus was wearing his high priest attire. I had the sense he was going to teach me through prophetic acts. The truth that I am in the Lord's royal family. He was helping me believe my position of sonship. Jesus then spoke these words to me. And he speaks these words to you, church, to you, beloved of Christ. Your brow must wear my blood before it can wear a crown. From his hands, I felt Jesus sprinkle warm blood over my forehead and around my head. Then he placed a crown on my head and immediately I felt his blood gather and return to Jesus. Oh, how precious is the blood of Christ. Not a drop will be wasted. Not a drop will be lost. The Spirit collects the blood of Christ and always brings it back to the worthy Lamb. Then Jesus said, Only the soul who is stripped of the world may wear a purple robe of royalty. This robe was thick and weighty with glory. The robe was purple on the outside and red on the inside. Before the robe was given, angels tore my shirt at the back and I could feel the wind of the Holy Spirit blow through the ribboned shirt. This is a prophetic act in the heavenlies. It's not that the tearing of my shirt is adding to the work of Christ. No, it's reminding the saints where their royalty is derived from, where their freedom, where their divine health was birthed. And that was through the displayed love of Jesus on Calvary and when he ribboned his back in love for our wholeness and our healing. Then Jesus threw the robe over my shoulders and tied it closed with a golden sash. Jesus then said, only the heart that holds the Savior will become a palace for the presence of the Most High. Staring at Jesus, the fiery wind of the Holy Spirit entered me and burned within my bosom. I then asked Jesus, why must we be royalty in a perfect realm? In the age to come, love is perfected. Perfection is the atmosphere of the land, of the new Jerusalem. But listen here. Jesus replied, I want you to be near. I want you to be near to me. We have access to the near presence of God through our position as the royal bride. We can see this in today's governmental structures. If we want to be in close proximity to the Queen of England, we need to be in a family that allows us continual close proximity to her. So we need to be dressed in the grace of royalty. We need to be bathed in the blood of Jesus. We need to be made whole by the wounds and the stripes on Jesus' back. Why? Because it allows us for eternity to be in his close 
presence, in near proximity. My eternal kingdom has structure. The Father's divine order has structure. The Spirit's work is structured. That is why it is so important that I make you as I am. What are the qualifications for being grafted into the Godhead? You need to become I am. For within the Godhead dwells the great I am. And the bride, the ecclesia, have been grafted by grace into that Godhead. They have become I am because of I am, if you can see it that way. It's nothing of our own doing. It is grace heaped upon grace forever. It will be grace that we are in that Godhead, in the I am. Proximity and presence. Oh, there is a divine connection between the two. This is the desire of Jesus' heart. That in his presence, his bride will be with him. Not distant, not from a distance, sorry, but in close proximity. That is the heart of a zealous lover who wants nothing more than to live in a kingdom where love will never be hindered in close proximity with the one he chose to pledge his heart to. Matt Here are my motives. Or you can say, beloved, here are my motives. To be obedient forever to the Father. And for us to then be close to each other and Him through the power of the Holy Spirit. This is only possible through the sacred work of the Holy Ghost. He will forever bring us into that union between the Father and the Son, into the fellowship of the glorious Godhead. And in that day, we will know that the Father loves us as much as the Son. And we will know that the Son loves us as much as He loves the Father. We will be enveloped in that awesome, unified, perfected bond of love where there is equal flowing love between all its members, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the Bride. She is now brought into the Godhead. Then I looked down at my feet, which had not been sandaled. I asked Jesus, Why did you not put sandals on my feet, like in the story of the prodigal son? Jesus replied, Matt, look where you are standing. I looked down at the throne room floor and and beneath the flawless crystal-like glass that was blue with this kind of circulating currents of fire beneath. Jesus said, look where you are standing. The blue fire flickered and whirled. The fire was moving and it seemed attracted to where I and Jesus were standing. The furnace of fire beneath the floor is funneled toward the sun and all the sons and daughters of God. And I believe the fire beneath the crystal floor of the sea of glass, that is The love of the Father, that Father-like love that saturates His throne room. It's the Spirit that is like the current of this fiery love. But wherever the Bride and Jesus are, this love of the Father follows us and it heats our feet. Jesus explained, this is the Father's fiery zeal for His house. It is a holy house, His habitation. When you walk through our Father's house, a family privilege is to walk barefoot in His holy presence and feel beneath your feet His blazing zeal for His children. 
Beloved, you have been grafted into an eternal family. Do you understand that? You are part of an eternal family. One day you will be in the physical presence of Jesus and the Father on his majestic mountain. We will surround his throne on the sea of glass and we will be with him forever. That will not be our only place of existence. Those are for the convocations where we come together in a big assembly to worship the Lord. But the truth remains, we will be in this heavenly family forever. Forever has no end. Everything on earth has an end, so it's hard to understand. But we will be forever grafted into the glory of the Godhead. Jesus desires for us to be brought into the sacred fellowship. That is the glory set before him, where him and his prepared beautiful bride stand before the Father and live and rule and reign as a holy household. The Father's zeal is his jealous love, which leaves no room in eternity for you to be apart from his fellowship. You are home when your feet burn and you feel the zeal of the Lord that floors his house. The vision ended with a declaration from Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Let me just read some scripture first. Let me get my Bible here. Revelation, Revelation chapter 1. I just feel like I need to read this over you before I read Christ's declaration in the vision. In the vision. Revelation 1 verse 5 onwards. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of kings of the, and the ruler of kings on earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests to his God and father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for your sacred words. Thank you for your scripture. Thank you for that hope in those verses. Jesus declared in that vision to his royal priesthood, You are a holy and royal priesthood, bride of Christ. Holy because you are clothed with the spirit of holiness. Royal because you are the bright bride of the bridegroom king of heaven. Priests because the father has called you close unto him. He has brought you into his manifest presence as forever sons and daughters with the privilege of returning your love as a princely priest in his royal courts, ministering to the majestic God who now lives with you in your midst forever. Dressed as you are and in the presence of God Almighty, you can cry out as I did the divine revelation. Bride of Christ, cry out with me today, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Together with Jesus, we worship you, God Almighty, uncreated Yahweh. There is none like you. You reign supreme above all. Your throne is untouchable. You dwell in unapproachable light. To you, all glory and dominion shall forever rest. Bless you. Bless you, Godhead. And thank you for grace. Thank you for the grace of calling us into your forever family. Bless you.